Agency in Motion Continuing Education Series for agents, producers, advisors, and agency builders in the financial services industry. And today, really, we wanted to discuss uh, an important topic for this time of year, because as we move into the new year, you want to you know, really concentrate on creating client conversations to encourage money mastery in the new year. And what you'll find as an advisor, as an agent, as you're going out there and more specifically positioning yourself as a financial coach is that those longer term perspectives, if somebody's got 15, 20, 25 years plus left until retirement, if somebody's got debt obligations, including a mortgage, and you can get rid of that in under 10 years, these time frames are so long in perspective. What it allows people to do is kick the can down the road, ignore, turn their back on, um, and that's going to create procrastination. As a financial coach, you want the exact opposite. You want them going into um, a mental state where they want to take action, they need to take action, they understand how taking action right now is going to improve the situation. So instead of those longer term perspectives, we want to talk about rules of money. We want to talk about getting into a position of financial fitness in a short order. We want to talk about a time commitment to getting this stuff done in terms of minutes per week. So really today, what I want to concentrate on is two different perspectives on the way to, like I said, create client conversations to encourage people to take those steps towards money mastery in the new year. And the first thing that I want to discuss is the 12 rules of money. It's a lot easier to help people understand the rules of money and how to implement the rules of money. Um, and that will help them towards their longer term goals. So there's not a standard list here. And many people have different perspectives on what should be on the list. However, these 12 like money principles, rules of money can help guide your conversations and help guide your clients or prospects at this point towards understanding financial success, both now as well in, as well as in the future. So you can use these 12, you can break them down. These can be used for content online to get conversations started. Um, you know, really you're looking for people to understand how to once again, take the next, next action step right now. Number one on the 12 is spend less than you earn. This is the most fundamental rule of personal finance. Remember, it's not what you do for your paycheck. It's what you do with your paycheck. It's not what you earn. It's what you spend. And more importantly, what you save and invest. To build wealth, you're going to need to live within your means and save money for the future. Number two on these rules is create a budget. Remember, a budget helps you plan and track your income and expenses. It helps you prioritize your spending and avoid overspending on non-essential items. The budget provides the framework that will allow us to um, go into those other areas that are neglected, like savings, investments, et cetera. Uh, number three, this is going to trip most people up. So if they can plan and have something in place, they preemptively overcome this challenge. Number three is save for emergencies. Unexpected events can derail financial plans. Most people don't understand how much this can derail their financial plans. So it's crucial to have an emergency fund that can cover your living expenses for three to as much as six months. Remember, if there's no emergency fund in place, what happens when the emergency fund or the emergency hits? You know, we're attacking uh, investments. We're attacking, um, you know, uh, savings and we're going into debt to be able to afford these. So number three, that save for emergencies is a preemptive um rule that can help you overcome things before they turn into uh, catastrophes. Number four, invest for the long term. Invest in stocks, bonds, real estates, or other assets can help you grow your wealth over time. However, it's essential to have a long-term perspective, avoid chasing short-term gains or making impulsive decisions. So it's not about looking down the long term, but it's understanding that the long term is going to come, whether you're prepared or not. And the preparation comes in the day-to-day -day activities that we can do and concentrate on right now. Number five is diversify that portfolio. Don't put all the eggs in one basket. Diversification includes you know, your investments from across the different asset classes. And this is a very, 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 very important because as you look at the different sectors and as you invest in different types of asset classes, you can reduce your risk 
and increase your potential returns and decrease the potential for large uh, portfolio uh, you know, negative returns. Number six, we have to minimize the debt. And that's a lot of what we concentrate on at the beginning as financial coaches. Debt can be a useful tool, but it also, as we see, can be a huge burden that limits your financial freedom. What we want to teach is try to minimize the debt, pay off the debt in a in a short period of time and get rid of what what you know tends to be the most costly and toxic uh, part of somebody's budget financial plan. Remember, everything's stacked systematically in the favor of the banking institutions and the financial industry. We have to help people understand how they're getting ripped off and how to reverse that cycle, stop that drain and set themselves up. For financial success. Number seven, we need to teach people to live below their means. Just because you can afford something, especially at this time of the year, it's important, doesn't mean you have to buy it. People should be focusing on things that truly matter and avoid what we call lifestyle inflation. What we see as financial coaches is the more we make uh, in terms of what we see for the clients, the more they spend. And as that lifestyle reaches a certain point and we have some type of hit to income, we have extra expenses come up. It can be a cascading event uh, that really uh, ruins everything that we've set up for the previous years uh, building into that lifestyle. So as your income increases, you don't necessarily have to increase your lifestyle. You do want to increase your savings and assets, things like that. Number eight, this is also important around this time of year, avoid financial scams. You want to teach your prospects and clients, be wary of investment opportunities that promise unrealistic returns or require you to pay upfront fees. Remember, do due diligence and consult with what you are is a trusted financial advisor to help them steer through those waters and steer clear of any scams that will you know, take their hard-earned money. Number nine, keep educating ourselves, keep learning. Financial literacy is a lifelong journey. What you wanna teach your prospects and your clients is keep educating yourself about personal finance, investing and money management. Remember, the more you learn, the more you earn. That goes with your financial picture as well. Uh, you know, personal finance, like we've always discussed, is a skill set. It requires time, energy, resources to create the best outcome. Somebody like you as a financial coach stepping in there can greatly help with that process, getting them to a desired financial end outcome they're actually excited about. And then number 10, especially around this time of year, learn how to give back. This can be extremely rewarding and also help provide the motivation to do more of this, to create more of an opportunity to give back. Money can be a tool for positive change. Consider giving back to community or supporting causes that you really care about. Remember, you cannot give out from breaking even. So if you make $50,000 a year and you spend $50,000 a year, there's no ability to give back. If you're making $100,000 a year, you're spending $50,000 a year, you can give back from that surplus. It's really, really important that people understand, do not live beyond your means because if you do, it creates problems. If you don't, it creates opportunities for you, including the one we're talking about right here, which is giving back. Number 11, plan for retirement. It's never too early or in some people's cases, too late to start planning for retirement. Consider contributing uh, a to you know an available retirement account option, or think about how you want to spend your golden years. Remember, it's not about looking into the future um, because too far in advance, because that's going to allow procrastination. Yes, retirement planning is extremely important, but break it down to a compressed time frame to understand why it's important right here, right now, and that's the opportunity cost. Remember, if you don't have money in you know, a place where you can invest it and grow it, there's an opportunity cost to that. That opportunity cost is gonna cost you your standard of living down the road. And then number 12, this is also really, really, really important. You know, a rule of money is to enjoy life. Money is not everything. It's important to enjoy the journey, find a balance between saving for the future and living for the present. As a financial coach, you don't want to be that person that comes in with a bunch of restrictions. You wanna be able to lay out a path that allows them and shows them how to get what they want down the road, but also how to live life right now, enjoy it, so that the things that you set up, they will be consistent with and they won't look at it 
as some type of an obligation where eventually they just turn their back on. And then the other thing that I want to discuss today is when we talk about what we can do for somebody financially, like we talked about earlier in the beginning of this episode, 20 plus years to retirement, you know, uh, seven to 10 years to become debt free. That allows people to procrastinate and kick the can down the road, compressing these time frames and helping people understand as a financial coach, how you can get them into a position in a short time frame is very, very, very important. So 90 days to financial fitness is a great framework and time work that you can set up to help people understand I can get something done now that will impact me now and impact my future. Becoming financially fit requires discipline, planning, and commitment. While 90 days is a relatively short time frame, it's also enough of a time frame to develop a plan of action and execution, creating good financial habits. In that 90-day time frame, you can make significant progress towards improving your financial situation. So when you are talking to someone, Remember, you want to compress the time frames. You want to give them something to concentrate on right now that they can see through in a limited time. So here's a 90-day financial fitness plan that you can adapt in your coaching that will help people take the next action steps right now, which, like we talk about, will allow a legitimate path to get towards uh, and get to the long-term destination, the long-term goals and plans. So let's go through this and hopefully this can help you um, set up expectations, like I said, that will demand and help people take the next action steps right now. So week one of a 90 day plan would just be to assess the current financial situation within the weeks. You've got overall goals and you've got tasks within those time frames. So task number one in week one would be understanding your income and expenses. And that means Assess your current income sources and calculate your average monthly income. Then you want to analyze your expenses and categorize them into essential and non-essential. And then you want to teach your prospects and clients to calculate their monthly expenses and determine their discretionary in income. Remember, it's what you make and what you spend and what you have left over to go into the other pots, which is savings, setting up the emergency fund, and more importantly, getting into the investment columns of the uh, financial framework. And then week one, task number two, is evaluating your debt and savings. You want to identify all your outstanding debts, including credit cards, loans, and student loans. It's amazing how many people just don't even look at this stuff because they're afraid. If you don't know what's going on, you're not going to know how to solve the issues and the problems that you have. You have to calculate the number of debts you have and the total amount that you owe for each debt and determine the interest rates. What are you actually sending in net income to the banks every single month? It's going to be probably for most Americans an astonishing ratio or percentage. And then when you identify how much of that hard earned net income goes to the bank, not to pay off the debts, but just to line their pockets, it will hopefully encourage them to take uh, the action steps. And then assess your current savings and determine, is there an emergency fund? If so, you know what is the need and how much of that has actually been met? Once you uh, accomplish the task of week one, we roll into week two. And week two is about creating that budget, just like a rule of money that we talked about. You need a budget. And in week two, there's going to be two tasks, task three and four. Task number three is building a monthly budget. You know, this is about learning the importance of budgeting and its role in achieving financial fitness. It would be like going to the gym. If you have some type of a workout plan, you're going to get better results. And if you just go to the gym and meander around to certain equipment or certain machines, not really understanding what you're doing and more importantly, why you're doing it. So learn the importance of budgeting and its role in achieving financial fitness and identify budgeting techniques and choose one that suits your preference. Remember, there's all types of budgeting techniques. One might be for one person, one might be for the other. They're both budgeting. It's just two different ways or multiple ways to approach that. And then the third uh, part of task number three is create the monthly budget based on your income and expenses, allocating funds for savings and debt repayment. Not just at the end of the month, whatever's left over, which is absolutely usually nothing for savings and debt repayment, prioritize this stuff. And then when you prioritize this stuff and get yourself into a framework of consistency, it's a lot easier to get this stuff accomplished. And then week number two, task number four, 
is learning how to track your spending. So you want to explore various budgeting tools or apps to track your expenses. We have the best money management program, cash flow management system. That's what we introduce to our clients. That's what works. And that's what we see allows them the two best things about the technology, the precision and the convenience. Because as you start track, tracking your spending habits, you're doing that daily. and You're categorizing your expenses accurately to understand what you're spending, where your money's going, and hopefully more important, why? Because the last part of this is reflection. You need to reflect on your spending patterns and identify areas where you can cut back. Remember, if you have no budget, if you don't know what's going on, how can you ever identify where things are going right or where things are going wrong? Moving into week three, we've got... Uh, once again, two tasks to complete in week three. Week number three is all about cutting expenses and increasing your income. And within week three, task number five in this 90-day framework that you can adopt in your client conversations to encourage money mastery in the new year, task number five is reducing unnecessary expenses. Once you have the budget, once you start identifying where your money's going, then you want to reduce the unnecessary expenses. This means you know, analyze your tracked expenses and identify what we call the non-essential items or services, money that you're spending that you don't really have to spend. And then you want to develop strategies to cut back on discretionary spending without sacrificing the necessities. And this means implementing cost-saving measures such as meal planning, couponing, or negotiating bills. Remember, Ben Franklin said a penny saved is a penny earned. So not only are you earning money, you're figuring ways to save money, cut costs, and then that money, once again, redirecting your financial plan to other areas will provide great benefit. And then week number three, task number six uh, in this 90-day framework is all about exploring additional income sources. Develop potential ways to increase your income, such as part-time jobs, freelancing, side hustles. You know, we live in a time and an era where there are so many opportunities to have side hustles that wasn't available decades ago. So people need to take advantage of this. And that means also assessing your skills and interest to find opportunities for monetization. It's not about finding something that you dread doing. This is about understanding you know, what you're passionate about, what your interests are, what your skill sets are, and aligning those for increased monetization. And then create a plan to pursue additional income sources during that 90-day period. And moving on to week four, there are... Uh, two tasks in week four that you really need to concentrate on. Week four is about now we're moving into setting financial goals. Remember, if you have no goals, how are you ever going to know if you're accomplishing what you need to do? So task number seven in week number four is defining smart financial goals. This means understanding, number one, the concept of smart goals, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, and then set specific financial goals for that 90 day period. Remember don't cast the line out way far in the future. It's not going to get somebody. What are we going to do right now, today, over the next day, few weeks, few months, that 90-day period? And we want to consider debt repayment, savings, and investments. Get into the habit of getting this stuff done. And once it's consistent, it becomes a habit. And habits are easier to get us to those financial goals and those resolutions that many people are going to start to make that will be done by late January, early February, and then write down your goals and develop an action plan to achieve them. Don't just think about the goals. Teach your clients and prospects, write down your goals, look at them, continue to revisit them. And how important is this going to be in your um, you know, current situation and future situation to get this stuff done? And then task number eight in week number four is about staying motivated and accountable, learning strategies to stay motivated on the financial journey, we want to share the goals with somebody like you as a financial coach, trusted friends, family members. The more that you share with people, the easier it is to be accountable. If you don't share anything with anybody else, it's very easy to break that uh, and not be accountable. And then explore visualization techniques to create visual reminders for these goals. Remember, it's about having something that we can look at, having something that we can read, having something we can revisit to keep us on pace. And then as we move into week five through 12, this is really about implementing and refining your financial fitness plan. So fitness, um, a physical fitness, as we roll into the new year, will be on people's mind. 
you need to insert yourself as a financial coach to help them understand the importance of financial fitness and how we can create financial fitness in this 90 day framework by also adopting the 12 rules of money that we talked about earlier. So in this particular uh, group of weeks, you have some tasks to complete. Task number nine, this is prioritizing debt repayment. Choose a debt repayment strategy. You know, we have free convert debt to wealth webinars that we run. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching that we do to learn the best strategy and apply it to the debts. Remember, if there are no debts, if you get those paid off in a fraction of the time, that frees up a massive amount of cash flow that can go to work for things like asset accumulation. And we want to allocate a portion of your monthly discretionary income towards debt repayment. It's not about changing the budget, lifestyle, or standard of living. It's about changing the way that we interact with the bank. We move from a consumer mentality to more like a banking mentality. And then we want to track our progress using technology and celebrate the milestones along the way. You know, we celebrate with our clients. Our clients are able to see through the technology where they're going, how far they've come, and where they need to go. And then task number 10 during this week five to 12 is building that emergency fund and starting to save. Establish an emergency fund is a financial safety net. People have it in place when the emergency comes in. Great. We've got something to handle it. Like we talked about earlier, if the emergency fund is not set, it causes us to prematurely attack assets or go into debt, two things that we definitely do not want to do. Determine a specific monthly savings amount to contribute towards your emergency fund. First thing we do is get an emergency fund set. After that, we can start looking at the other things, debt payoff, asset accumulation, and then explore different savings options such as high yield savings accounts or investment vehicles. Don't give your money to the bank for little to nothing in return. That's the main point uh, of that. Task number 11 in the week five to 12 is automating your finances and bill payments. You wanna automate as much of this as possible because as you set this up to be automated, it's easier to stay consistent. It's easier to have the money go to the defined areas that we've set up in the financial fitness plan. Set up automatic transfers to your savings account on a designated day of each month, not what's left over. First thing you want to do when money comes in, pay yourself, save money, pay off the debts, those type of things. And then arrange for automatic bill payments to avoid the late fees or missed payments. You know, if it's left up to us, we're probably going to make some human errors. Automate as much of this as you possibly can. And then monitor your bank accounts regularly to ensure automated processes are functioning correctly. Once you automate it, make sure it's always in place because if something happens, you know, and something is missed, you don't want that to turn into a bigger problem. And then task number 12 during this particular five to 12 week period is about continuous learning and adjustment. So engage in ongoing financial education through books, podcasts, or online resources. A lot of the things that we provide our clients, we want to encourage them to continue learning, continuing to put into place, and continue to get better. Like we talked about, just like physical fitness, financial fitness is going to be determined by a number of things. Reflect on your progress, identify areas for improvement, and make the necessary changes or adjustments. The financial fitness that we look at is a long-term roadmap and a journey, but we don't want to look at the very end point because like we talked about, that allows us uh, in, in terms of people and humans to kick the can down the road, ignore it, put it off to another day. While 90 days can be a significant starting point and enough time to build money habits, it's important to continue practicing healthy financial habits beyond this period to ensure a successful long-term plan. Personal finance is a skill set like we talked about, and it requires time, energy, and resources to implement, learn, and then more importantly, master. Like we talk about, get away from the longer-term conversation, 20 plus years, under 10 years, and talk about rules, talk about getting something in place in 30 days. And more importantly, you know, our technology that we lead with, that can the cash flow management system that we use. We can teach our clients on how to do these things, you know, in 10 minutes a week. So this is not a big commitment. It's a bigger commitment getting the understanding, the setup on the front side. But once again, the use of automation, the use of technology is greatly going to assist with the consistency and the precision and the convenience of getting this stuff done. Agency in motion, building, operating and managing agencies in the new digital environment.